Hello everybody, I'm Charlie Atkinson and today I'm in Kidlington near Oxfordshire to see the guys at Electrogenic. Now this company transformed a number of classic cars over to electric so I paid them a visit to find out how they do it, to see what they're working on at the moment and to see what the future has in store for them. And who better to ask than Steve Drummond, the co-founder of Electrogenic. I sat down with him to discuss the history of the company and why he began to convert classic cars over to electric. Yeah, so the whole idea started about five years ago. My colleague Ian was trying to interest me in another old car and I said, oh, it's got another horrible old engine. And he said, we should make it electric. And I said, oh, what a stupid idea. Um, but then did a whole load of research, went over to the States, realized that for the first time, actually it was possible to make an electric car that was worth owning. And uh, so we thought, well, we'll give it a go. Um, converted that Beetle over there, actually, which is back here because it's uh, just got a nice new set of shiny disc brakes. Um, and uh, then the whole business grew from there. My personal EV journey is I've never been very interested in cars. Um, I like driving old cars. Um, and I always had this long going relationship with Ian who was looking after my cars with, um, for me. And so uh, my background is as a chartered engineer in the energy industry actually, so designing nuclear power stations and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, me and Ian coming together was he's a car guy, he's a guy with decades of experience in, in, uh, in, in, in modifying and, and restoring old cars and, and building new engines and doing all of those things. And, and me, I come with the design uh, and uh, technology background. And so it's a great marriage of uh, cars and, and technology. Steve and Electrogenic have completed a number of exciting conversions over the past few years, with projects ranging from VW Beetles all the way to classic Porsches and Jaguars. But what are some of Steve's favorites? One of the highlights is that we Oh, we have such wonderful, lovely customers, and so we get to see some of the cars again and again because we borrow them back for shows. So um, Bertie over there, the, the first car that we converted every time, I, I haven't seen it for a year or two, um, but every time I see Bertie, I just get a lovely warm glow. Um, the one I like to drive the best is the 356 behind us. The, one which, the ones which have been a lot of fun in the development have been the off-road Land Rovers. I mean, I, I've never done really much off-road before. Um, well, four-wheel anyway, done a lot of bikes. Spending a lot of time driving those up and down hills and through mud at Glastonbury has been a lot of fun. Um, they all have their challenges. Probably the most beautiful, sublime and serene is the Citroen DS that we did. Beautiful, golden, smooth, gliding. Looks like a spaceship and now it drives like one. So we've seen what they do and have heard why they do it, but how exactly does Electrogenic turn these classic cars into fully electric masterpieces? Well, allow Steve to explain with the stunning Porsche 356 as an example. It's beautiful. <laughs> and we didn't have anything to do with it being beautiful, it's just naturally beautiful. But what we have done is we've turned it into something that's lovely to drive as well. So shall I show you around? Please do, yeah. Okay. As you can see, um, we've got some batteries in the front. Also in there is a charge system um, and also the spare wheel. Partly the reason for the spare wheel being still in there is A, it's aesthetic, and B, we have a big conversation with all of our customers is don't put too many batteries in. You don't want to ch change the handling characteristics of the car, or at least you don't want to adversely affect them. So light on batteries, high on fun. So batteries in the front, not too much weight, a little bit more than the original, which is great because these were always notoriously back heavy, a bit light on the front, and now it's really solid and stable, drives beautifully. The motor is sized so and controlled so that uh, it's a bit more peppy than the original, and we control the way it behaves, so the interchange gear, you take your foot off the accelerator, the electronics makes the RPM turn down as if you're going towards uh, idle, as, as it would on a normal petrol engine, um, so that the gear change feels really natural, um, and rest, you just change gear and away you go. Um, you can see there's electric motor, motor's air-cooled, there's uh, an adapter plate that we've built inside there, there's a lightweight flywheel with a high performance clutch attached and then that just bolts directly to the original gearbox which is the slightly less shiny piece of aluminium that you can see underneath there. Um, here on display you have the 12 volt system, so this is 
Uh, this motor is running at 144 volts. Um, this is uh, converted down to 12 volts for the 12 volt system. Um, and on this side is high voltage system. So you have the inverter which drives the motor and the cooling system which keeps the, motor, the inverter cool. So this is the all conventional um, dashboard, all the original dials. Um, the question is, how do you control it as an EV? Well, the answer is like this, switch it on. So you see we've got um, green light, which means we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. The uh, rev counter is just saying hello. Uh, and you'll see that the, the fuel tank indicator is up. It's saying that we're uh, just over three quarters charged. This, one. this was the original heater control, which said whether the heater, heat was forward or back. So we've just repurposed it. So this is neutral. This is for going forwards. Neutral, reverse. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the other part of mechanical uh, design that has been evolving really quite fast and we've done a lot with is, is how, we, how we physically build the batteries and other components into the vehicles. So we've gone from aluminium, bo aluminium boxes to all steel boxes because steel is much more flexible, it's cheaper, the price of aluminium has gone through the roof in the last uh, six months, crazy. Um, and we can fabricate in-house. So we design them up, have them laser cut and bent, and then all of the welding and fab, fab work comes in-house. This is our prototype kit for series defenders. Uh, it's not the final version. The final version is with the laser cutters as we speak. Um, and the idea is that the whole unit will contain absolutely everything you need apart from the extension battery pack which goes in the back. So it will include all of the, all of the electronics, all the cooling systems, everything, everything, everything in one box. You just drop it in, um, clamp it onto the chassis rails and away you go. Um, and so very sophisticated uh, mechanical engineering design is necessary to make that possible. So what's next for Electrogenic? The company has recently announced its new EV conversion kits, which will allow virtually anyone to convert their classic car to electric. The kits, which are only available for Land Rover Defenders now, were launched back in June, and Steve explains the port process behind them and how they will work in the real world. Where this whole retro EV thing came from is that there's a huge market in the United States for DIY electric conversions, and has been for decades, actually. Yeah. Um, now what they do there is they sell you all the components and, they, and the wiring diagram and say, okay, there you go. Um, what we're doing here is something different, which is to say, how can we reduce the whole install to the minimum number of parts that you have to deal with and so that you're not exposed to any high voltage electric um, when you're doing the install. And so that's, so our concept is for this one, literally, you take out the engine, um, fuel tank and, and, and the exhaust. Um, you bolt on the motor to, in this case, this, this conversion uses the full original gearbox. So you bolt the motor onto the gearbox um, bell housing. And then you drop this box in and you wire up the dashboard. And then you've got a vehicle which will do 80 miles range and you're away. And if you want to, and then you just bolt the extension pack underneath at the back of the vehicle where the fuel tank was, run the cables and plug them in, just a, a quick quick connector plug in, and then you've um, got it up to 130, 140 miles range, which is as much as you ever want to do in a Series 2 Land Rover. As the company looks to the future, which classic cars could be next on the electrogenic radar? So the disease that I've caught is that I tr we try and I try to drive all the cars when they come in. We prefer cars to come in driving so we can really understand them before we take the engine out. Um, and, and now, of course, what happens is every time I drive them, um, I think, oh, this would be so much better electric. So they're all better electric. Um, dream cars, I don't know, just any of the iconics, really. Probably sacrilege, but a DB5 um, would be great. You know, who knows? People say all sorts of things. Reality is, is that what converts people to do, do it to what we're doing is driving the cars. What we're trying to do, what we're after doing, what we pride ourselves on is making cars that people like to drive and they all drive better. 
So they don't smell, they don't make the same noise, they make their own use, distinct, unique noise. Um, they're reliable, they, they go when you get in them and, and turn the key. Um, but they're also a lot more fun to drive and that's the key to it. That's all for this video. If you liked it, then please do drop us a like and remember to subscribe as well. For more electric car reviews like this, you can head over to our channel and for daily news coverage features and much more, you can also head over to evpowered.co.uk. Thanks once again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.